welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. Our first story today is Flower Talk. Hey you, Psst, down there. That's right, I am a plant and I'm talking to you. But don't get too used to it. We don't make a habit of talking to humans. I want to clear up some of your crazy ideas about the, what the colors of our flowers mean. We sit here growing, minding our own business while you guys go on about how red roses stand for love and white ones are good for weddings and all kinds of mushy, ridiculous stuff. What a load of fertilizer. <laughs> We're not using flowers to send information to you, so butt out, okay? We use our flowers to talk to the animals. Why? We need some help down here. What would you do if your legs were stuck in the ground for your entire life? How would you eat? How would you drink? How would you get your pajamas on? <laughs> what a crazy flower. <laughs> we can take care of some things ourselves. We get our food with help from the sun. And when it rains, our roots slurp up the water. But we need help making our seeds, our babies. What more important than that? Without seeds, there'd be no more plants. We'd be finished, kaput. To make a seed, we need pollen from a different plant of our same type. How do we get that? We can't just waltz over and take some. That's why we need animals. Here's what we do. We trick them into carrying it for us. We're nice about it though. We pay them a little something for their efforts. Well, usually. How do we get them to help? We advertise. We hold up big signs. Our flowers are the signs. They say, come on over. We have a special treat for you. Those are some pretty flowers. Lots of different colors. And believe me, they come. Who wouldn't? Especially if they're hungry. If we're in luck, they bring along some pollen from a flower they visited earlier. Do you know they're doing this? Do they know they're doing this? Who knows? And who cares? It works and everyone's happy. So what's the deal with the colors? A flower's color invites specific animals to visit. You seem like a bright kid, so I'm going to let you in on the conversation. Then maybe you could do me a favor and tell the other humans about it, okay? Red flowers are usually talking to birds. The red flower's message is a top secret one for birds only. Most other pollinators are insects and they can't see the color red. A red flower says, hey, hummingbird over here, carry my pollen and I'll give you a sip of nectar. By the way, red flowers don't have much of an, much of an odor. Birds have a horrible sense of smell, so why bother making perfume for them? Blue and purple flowers talk to bees. Bees need flower pollen to feed their babies. They have special pockets on their legs to carry it home to their young. But some pollen always gets stuck on their bodies and pass to the next flower they visit. Blue and purple flowers are saying, yo bee, could you help me more? Move some of this pollen and take some home for the kids, see? We can be thoughtful too. Yellow flowers are also talking to bees. Bees are our top helpers. I heard that scientists just figured out that bees have three favorite colors, blue, purple, and yellow. Took the guys long enough. We've known this for ages. That's why so many of us make flowers in these colors. We like the reliable help. Here's what a yellow flower says. 
Bees? Bargain basement this way. Free food. <laughs> Some white flowers talk to moths and bats. Moths and bats fly mostly at night. And when it's dark outside, what color shows up best? Well, white, of course. White flowers are like giant signs that say, hey, come get your free nectar here. White flowers also put out perfume as an extra guide to help these animals find them. Finally, I don't care for it myself, but I guess to a moth or a bat, it smells pretty good. Brown flowers often talk to flies. Here's what they say. they're saying. Get a whiff of our perfume. It's stinky, just the way you like it. This is true. Brown flowers reek like something dead and rotten. And flies need to lay their eggs on dead things so their maggot babies will have something to eat when they hatch. I know, so gross. And a brown flower doesn't help a mama fly at all. She gets drawn in by the stench, but there's no meat there. Just the flower tickling a bug into doing work for free. The flower gets pollen, but the fly gets nothing. The only rotten thing around here is the dill. <laughs> Green flowers aren't talking to anyone. Are they just shy? No. They don't talk to animals because they don't need help. Their pollen is carried by the wind. Plants with green flowers are just green all over because they don't need animals to notice them. Would you bother getting dressed up if you didn't need to? I know I wouldn't. <laughs> Do animals only go to flowers that are their favorite colors? No, but usually they do. For example, butterflies are drawn more to a flower's shape than its color. Butterflies like a steady platform to land on and tubes filled with nectar to sip with their long curly tongues. They visit flowers of many colors, but even butterflies have favorites, white, purple, yellow, pink, red, and orange. There's a lot of favorites, don't you think? <laughs> It's been good chatting, but it's time for you to leave now. Go take a hike. I'm pretty busy. In case you didn't notice, I'm making a new flower. It's going to be yellow with a nice roomy platform. I'm just about done with it. But before you leave, do you want to guess who I'm getting ready to talk to next? Can you guess, boys and girls? Who would he be planning to talk to next? Nice yellow flower with a roomy platform. Hmm. Do you see who's coming? A bee and a butterfly. Okay. Well, that was an interesting flower talk, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, Miss Lisa. All right, we have another book for you about flowers. This is called Ava's Poppy. So there's her poppy. A poppy is a reddish orange flower. Okay, let's see here. Every morning, Ava crossed the field in front of her house. It's a big field, isn't it? One day she found a poppy. You are very beautiful, said Ava. Please, can I be your friend? Ava visited her flower every day, and every day she found it right away. It stood out in the field, a lovely shining red. Its petals were very soft, and sometimes they moved gently in the breeze. Together, Ava and her poppy would look up at the sky. Ava was always there for her friend. She protected it from the cold wind. She gave it water when the earth was dry. 
And she put up her umbrella when it rained too hard. Ava looked after her friend with tender loving care, but then the flower began to lose its petals and Ava was sad. Only the round capsule was still shining fresh and green. But soon that too became brown and dry. Ava dug a hole and laid the capsule inside and covered it with earth. Goodbye, dear Poppy, whispered Ava. Ava made a circle of stones to remind her where the flower once stood. Then winter came and Ava often thought about her friend. The snow would certainly have been too cold for my flower, she said to herself. In the spring, when Ava went back to her stone circle, then she made a wonderful discovery. In the center of the circle, a tender little plant was reaching up toward the sky. And there it grows again. All right, boys and girls, today I have a little guessing game for you. I have some of the most popular red flowers. If you remember what Miss Kim talked about, red is what attracts the birds and the hummingbirds especially. So I want to see once if you can guess what flowers I put up here on the board. What about this flower? Do you know what flower this is? This is the one I just read about with Ava. Can you say poppy? This one is a poppy. I bet you know this flower. Okay, maybe mom, dads bring it home to mom sometime. This is a red rose. Here's another flower. It's long, tall stems and a big poofy bloom at the top. That's a carnation. Okay, what about this red flower? This is one we don't see too often here in Indiana. But people down in Florida see it all the time. In Hawaii, down in the tropics, this is a hibiscus. Okay, pretty cool. This flower, let me stick it right here. Do you guys know what this one is? This one you see often at Christmas time. If you said poinsettia, you are right. Hey, okay, here's a couple other ones. This one's in my garden. I just planted a few of these. Do you know what this flower is? It's a petunia. Here's another one that's red. Anybody recognize that one? Those are tulips. Now, in Miss Kim's book, she talked about things that flowers need to grow. And so I've got a few things here that I'm gonna put up here. I want you to tell me, is it something that flowers need or something they don't need? Maybe it's something that you need to grow with. Okay, so let's just move some of these flowers out of the way. And can you tell me, boys and girls, do flowers need air? Do they need oxygen? I hope you said yes, okay? So do you, right? You need that to make sure you stay alive. What about dirt? Do plants need dirt? Flowers need dirt? I hope you said yes. They definitely need dirt. Now, do you need dirt as a little boy or girl? No, but it sure is fun to play in sometimes, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> what about this picture? Look at all that yummy food. There's bananas and eggs and, and fruit and meat and, I don't know, blueberries and fish and tomatoes and carrots. Is this something that plants need? Do they need all this food? I hope you said no, because that's right. That's something that we need, right? Not plants. Plants don't need that kind of food. What about this? Big old sunshine. Do plants need sunshine? Yes. Do little boys and girls need sunshine? Yes, we really do. We need to get out there and enjoy that sunshine. All right, here's another picture. Do plants need rain? Do they need water to grow? I think, I, hopefully you said yes in the book I read and in Miss Kim's book, it both talked about how plants need water to grow. All right, look at this picture. Look at all that fun exercise. Is this something that plants need? Do plants go out and get exercise? 
I hope you said no. In fact, you remember Miss Kim, the one plant that was talking, talked about how it was stuck in the ground, right? Its roots were stuck in the ground. And it can't move at all. So that's something that's for people, not for plants. Okay, what about this picture? There's the moon and the stars. Is this something plants need to grow? Probably I would say no. Okay. They do get the sun and the nighttime, right? They have that cycle, but if you kept a plant in the dark all the time, would it grow? No, it wouldn't. I have one more picture. Who is this for? Is this for boys and girls or for plants? I think the picture gives it away, right? Do plants need to sleep? No, they don't. So if you look at all these pictures, which one goes with plants? The air, the water, the dirt, and the sun. And for you, as a little human, we need to eat food, we need to sleep, and we need to have our exercise and playtime, right? This goes with sleeping, doesn't it? All right, I think Miss Kim has another book for us today. Sure, you remember one of those things that visits the flowers was a bumblebee. So we have a story about a bumblebee. Will be the bumblebee. Will be the bumblebee lives his life in your garden so happily. Up early in the morning till the evening hour, flying around from flower to flower. Now everybody knows, I suppose, without bees in your garden, nothing grows. They take the pollen to where it's supposed to be. That's how nature works. Good job, Willoughby. Now, bumblebees, from the day they are born, wear a black and yellow jersey just to keep them warm. And Willoughby's was special. It was a perfect fit, because Willoughby's mother had knitted it. <laughs> Willoughby was out one sunny day, Unknown to him, his jersey had begun to fray. Do you see this string? There's a thorn right here. His jersey caught where it was torn, right on the end of a rose's thorn. Poor Willoughby, what will he do? It's going to get cold without that. And as Willoughby flew away, he did not stop. His jersey unraveled from the bottom to the top. And when he realized this, he lost his hum. Poor little bee. He was showing the whole garden his bare bum. Well, with no jersey and being late in the day, Willoughby was so cold he couldn't fly away. Poor Willoughby, look at him all snuggled up there trying to get warm. <laughs> he was frightened and all alone. All he wanted to do was get home. Now Monica the butterfly, she flew down. She told Willoughby to wipe off his frown. She'd seen what had happened and thought she knew what to do. She gathered all the wool up and off she flew. Hmm, what do you think she'll do? With the unraveled wool, she flew to Spider Steve. Oh, and asked him for help because he knew, he, she knew he could weave. With a twist of his arm, she had him agree. He would weave the wool they had and make a new jersey. And look at that, they're already getting it put together. Now Spider Steve, he finished so quick, he used a pattern he'd found in the woman's weekly. 
Moni with a smile. She thanked him so, but Wilby needed help, and now she had to go. She found Wilby where he was last. She said, quick, put this on really, really fast. <laughs> Look at him reaching all, all of his arms up or feet or whatever you want to call those things that those bees have. Mm-hmm. Put his little jacket back on. With his new jersey on, he got back his hum. All his bits were warmed up, even his bum. <laughs> that looks much better, doesn't it? That's the way we think of a bumblebee. He's smiling again, too. Willoughby hugged Moni with a big thank you. He asked her to thank Spider Steve for him, too. But now back to his house he had to go, for he knew his mom would worry because she loved him so. <laughs> Now, on a sunny day in your backyard, you might still see Wilby working hard from flower to flower and carefree, wearing his new black and yellow jersey. And there he is, and he looks happy, very happy, Wilby. So that's a little story about the bumblebee. Kind of helped us think about those plants a little bit more, didn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we've got time for one more story. This one is about a bird, Katerina and the Perfect Party. Katerina is a little brown bird with great big colorful thoughts. And look at all those flags she's putting on this string. All colorful. Katerina likes to try new things. She likes to make new things. She spends a lot of time making lists. She has lists of things to do, lists of things not to do, lists of things to love, lists of things not to love. Hmm. One thing she wrote down here on this little note was things not to love. Surprises, surprises, surprises. So I guess Katerina does not like surprises. Hmm. Surprises are fun. Katerina's most important list is her list of friends. That is because she is going to throw her very first party. <laughs> Katerina's party will be the best party anyone has ever seen. Party, party, party. She has planned each and every detail. I guess all of these things go with that party. The invitations will be mm, making those all up. Inviting. Well, that's the way invitations are supposed to be. They're supposed to be inviting, aren't they? Say party, 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 party. The decorations will be, hmm, she's thinking about all of that, putting it all together here. She's got out her pen and her paint. Decorative. <laughs> Well, of course, decorations are supposed to be decorative, aren't they? The appetizers will be, hmm, got some interesting looking appetizers there. Appetizing. I'm sure you guessed that before I ever read that page, right? Katerina is very organized. Look at that big wagon full of things. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> what do you think, boys and girls? Not sure. But 
but on the morning of the big day, things do go wrong. And as you can see, it's raining. She has her umbrella out. It got windy. Things are blowing around. That sure would ruin a party. Look at her umbrella it turned inside out with all the wind. Oh, and look at that pot of soil all dumped over. Wow. They went really wrong. Look at all that water on the ground. Poor Katerina. This is not what she had planned. All her lists are useless. Mm. Except one. Katerina's most important list. Now I wonder which list it was. Think about it a minute. What list would be the most important list that Katerina made? Let's see if you're right. Goodness. Oh, her list of friends. Did you guess her list of friends? Nothing had messed up her list of friends. Now here come all of her friends. Are you looking at the picture? Every one of her friends are bringing something with them. Everything Katerina had got ruined, remember? Katerina is very surprised. Uh-oh. Didn't she have a list that said it, she did not like surprises? But look at her face. Do you think she looks unhappy? She's smiling, if you ask me. <laughs> She's very surprised. Her party is the best party anyone has ever seen. Far better than she could have ever planned. Looks like everyone's having fun at Katerina's party. How nice. And now she has this new list. Surprisingly good surprises like rainstorms, mud baths, mud pies, mud dipped worms, and mud dipped friends. So she changed her mind. She likes some surprises. <laughs> so that's Katerina and the perfect party. Well, we learned a lot today about plants, didn't we? We hope you have a great day, and that's all for us here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.